Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor. I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for joining us this week. Boy, yeah. we got some news and we're going to start off with... We're going to start off with some breaking news about Tesla and the U.S. federal tax credit. Just came out yesterday. Uh, we Now, we there was a lot of speculation that Tesla hit and met, surpassed the 200th delivery in the U.S. 200,000. 200,000 yeah. delivery in the U.S. in the month of June. It wasn't, um, of course, confirmed by Tesla, but there was a lot of speculation. Well, last night they confirmed it. Well, the, the confirmation came uh, through a very quiet update to their support page about electric vehicle incentives. We'll put a link down in the video description so you mm -hmm. can go look at it yourself. So essentially the phase out has actually started. Uh, Tesla is saying that the federal tax credit, uh, the full amount of $7,500 is still applicable uh, on or before December 31st of this year. After that, it drops to thirty-seven fifty from January first to June thirtieth of twenty nineteen, and then the last little bit will be eighteen hundred seventy-five dollars from July first to December thirty-first. So, okay. everybody in the U.S. Uh, can qualify, and I have to put the word qualify on there because it is tied to federal taxes mm -hmm. um, until the end of next year. So, those of you who are looking at uh, getting a Model Three, of course, uh, you can certainly apply for this. Um, the other thing too, you got to keep in mind, of course, and, and I know a lot of people will probably complain about the fact that they're still waiting for the less expensive or the base model of the mm -hmm. Model 3. Standard uh, range version. Exactly. Yeah. And if Tesla keeps to their time scale that they publicly said, which is anywhere from six to nine months, mm -hmm. we're looking at the first quarter of uh, 2019 for that. There is a slight chance that if things really keep ramping up that they have been. Uh, that they may start production on the uh, base model a little sooner. Mm -hmm. So there's always a chance that somebody might be able to slip in at $7,500. I wish that $7,500 was across for everybody, yeah. but at least you'll get something. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. And then as of January 1st, 2020, the way the program is structured now, it will end and there'll be no more credits available. That, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. remember, it's a, one year, yeah, it's a one-year phase-out period. Mm -hmm. So you get two full quarters where mm -hmm. they can get the full 7,500 yep. and then the last, um, over the, the next um, period of time, it, it, it de-escalates. That's right. Is now, that right GM, with, the, with, with their electrification, with the Bolt and the Volt, of course, platforms, are striving uh, to break the 200,000 mark as well later this year. There's speculation that they may hit that in the fall or, or close to the end of the year. So stay tuned for GM doing that. Uh, now, however, in the meantime, there's some legislation that's happening at the federal level in the United States. There's a House bill called HR 6274 that's been drafted and that's um, trying to work its way through the House. And this bill would amend the current Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to extend certain tax credits related to electric cars. Now, the bill is proposing that they would basically remove the 200,000 EV limit, credit limit, and uh, set an unlimited number of vehicles, but set it for a time frame of 10 years um, as opposed to what it is today. And that, and also a differentiator is that it wouldn't be a credit on your uh, income taxes and based, of course, on your income. It would be a, uh, you would receive it immediately, uh, probably in the form of a rebate check, or I'm guessing similar to what happened in Canada here, where maybe the dealers will take it off the price for you in certain cases, and they'll receive it back. I think that's a more fair mm -hmm. system. Maybe 10 years might be a little bit much. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, yeah. based on things, the way things are progressing, maybe it could be five or the, six. The but way cost parity is coming. Hey, but if you can take 10 years, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. If you're interested, you know, of course, write your, your local congressman or congresswoman uh, about it and, and express your concerns that you'd love that program to be extended and for that bill to pass and uh, put as much support as you'd like on that. But mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned. Now, of course, we had some new, more breaking news for us local folks here in Ontario. Uh, we talked about this in our last couple of shows, I believe, and, and in a lot of the public outreach that Trev and I have been doing, we've been inundated with questions here locally about the, the Ontario EV or EHVIP incentive program. Well, last night we got the news on that the uh, provincial government updated the website and they officially have terminated, you are terminated, or canceled the, <laughs> I, just, I had to do that. I'm sorry. And canceled the program. Um, so basically, on July 3rd, our new government announced that they were going to end the cap and trade program, uh, which, of course, the uh, electric, elect electric and hybrid vehicle incentive program and the electric vehicle charging incentive program funding for those was based from cap and trade. So, of course, cap and trade has been canceled. So as of yesterday being Wednesday, July the 11th, um, the program is no longer in place. 
That's so right. what does that mean? Because we're going to get a ton of questions. Well, we'll on put this. a link in the video description yep. at the bottom to the Ministry of Transportation Ontario because this yep. is where the uh, the thing comes from. So basically, they've put a little bit of a sunset clause in there, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. Yep. So basically, uh, what they're saying is that applications for the EVH EVHIP. E EHVIP, sorry, I'm tongue tied yeah, this morning. It's a tough one. Um, so the applications will be accepted from dealerships, car owners, or prospective car owners uh, only if one of the following conditions are met eligible vehicles that have been delivered to consumers, registered and plated on or before July 11th, will receive the incentive. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a key point is that they need to be plated. So it's not just that you It's you've, always been like it's that. On, it's always been on that. Yeah, that's right. To, to, you have to put a license plate on that form, whether the dealer does it for you or you do it, you submit it. There's been so There's, much confusion yeah, about exactly. this because we're still getting emails. I'm still getting tweets. Yep. When does the rebate really count? <laughs> it's not when you order the car. Yep. It's not when you put your deposit down. Right. It's when you receive the vehicle, the paperwork is signed, the mm -hmm. check's been handed over, the car's plated in your name. That is the date that that matters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, second clause. Inventory, in quotes, that dealers have on lots or orders made by dealerships with manufacturers on or before uh, July 11th will also be honored for the incentive provided the vehicle is delivered to consumers, registered and plated, plated. by September 10th. So it's about a 60-day window. Right? I read this. Mm -hmm for the Tesla people out there specifically, because a lot of people are asking about, yep. about this. I read this as if you've put your deposit, not a deposit, not a reservation, but you have a, a firm confirmed you've order ordered. with Tesla mm -hmm. um, that you may or may not be covered. It depends on the interpretation um, because they're saying inventory. Now, Tesla doesn't necessarily have inventory on Model 3s just sitting on lots right now. They have, they've been making what are essentially inventory cars and then shipping them. Yeah. So the way I look at it is, and the interpretation's unclear at this point, but the way I kind of think about it is you may need to have a VIN number already assigned in your account for it to, to actually um, be confirmed. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get some confirmation from mm -hmm. Tesla about this as to whether you need a VIN number or not. But if you have a confirmed order in Tesla and not just sitting on your reservation, um, then you may still be okay. So we're hoping to get clarified on that. If we do, we'll let you know as soon as possible. And of course, uh, in conjunction with that, the vehicle electric vehicle charging incentive program, uh, which is where you could get some money back both on the cost of a home charger, a level two charger, and the installation of that charger as well from a certified electrician and a certificate of inspection. That is canceled effective July 11th. So if you have not purchased or don't have uh, anything installed before this date, um, you will get zero. So it's a pretty straightforward. Yeah, just uh, to clarify, it says in the uh, in the paragraph, it says charging stations purchased and or installed before this date will be eligible to yeah. receive the incentives if the application is submitted Sorry, within, within 60, 60 days. days of July 11th. Yeah. So they so, are giving you that 30, uh, the two month window as well for that grace period, I guess. Mm -hmm, yeah. That. So if you... Um, so if you yeah. bought if you bought a unit and didn't get it installed right. as of July 11th, you're or um, yeah as of July 11th, you're still not going to get anything. You Correct. may be able to claim it on the on the charger, but not necessarily for the installation. Right. So if you bought a charger before yesterday, you can claim some money back on that, but you have 60 days to send the paperwork in. If you don't, then you're out of luck. If you got it installed prior to yesterday, then you can same thing. You can submit some paperwork to get some we, money back. If you haven't after then you're out of luck on the install. Yeah, there may be some confusion about this because yeah. the the charging incentive program is up to a maximum of of a thousand dollars. So right. maximum of five hundred for the unit, maximum of five hundred for the installation. Mm -hmm. So the two are not necessarily weighted against each other. You may right. get a rebate for one part of it, but not but not the other or, right. or both. It, it, but right now it, it all depends on making sure that you have the unit and it's been installed as of the cutoff date, which was yesterday. Yep. There you go. So, wow, all of a sudden, what a difference a day makes. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, we talked about this the other day. Uh, Trevor and I were at a, at a public event uh, uh, for an EV hybrid club uh, meetup a few days ago. And uh, we talked about, you know, that it's going to be sad when these programs go away because Ontario really, we've reported this on the show, has been leading the way from a Canadian EV adoption perspective, certainly in 2017, they we blew past Quebec as far as numbers go, and this is really, in my opinion, going to slow things down. It, it will for I, short term. I, yeah, I think right. I think what's going to happen here is that, of course, with the July numbers, you know, things are going to be petering out. Yeah. Um, the next few months are going to be a little slow. The numbers are yeah. going to be down for sure. And then the norm will kind of set in. People get adjusted to the fact, well, I guess there's no rebates. And then things will just kind of take off. Now, hopefully mm -hmm. next year, once the cheaper cars start coming in from the market, that 
things might be able to take off again because right. at a lower price point, it's a little more palatable, so to speak. Right. But it's a shame. Uh, yeah. It's too early to cancel these 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 programs because I we agree. haven't reached cost parity yet. Right. They're still expensive to get into. Mm -hmm. um, the current government's making a lot of noise about reducing the cost of fuel by 10 cents per liter. Although there's yeah. a lot of talk, of course, that they may jack up the prices and absorb the money. I mean, there's just so much talk right now. Well, I mean, they announced that, you know, that the tax, uh, the car cap and trade tax ended and that gas was, uh, that was freeing up three and a half cents a liter. This is just for our, our Ontario people. Uh, yet the gas prices went up that same day or the next day. So <laughs> what happened to the three and a half cents that are supposed to go into people's pockets? Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Let's get on to some, some good news. Again, the momentum does continue, though, around the world. And there's a new report out by a company called Energia from Australia. Uh, this report states that EVs will match ICE refilling times as well as range of ICE cars by 2024. And uh, I could certainly see the range refilling. I'm not sure. Um, this, of course, if achieved, would continue to help speed up the adoption of electric vehicles. We do know that more fast charging is being developed. We talk about it all the time. The fast nets in Europe and all these other places that are looking to, to implement fast charging stations uh, that are beyond uh, greater than 150 kilowatt charging speeds. Uh, Ultra and all these different names that they're giving them. So, you know, 2024 may be a little of aggressive time frame for EVs to match both range and refilling times. I could certainly see range happening. I mean, you know, the Model 3 is a 500 kilometer car. Roadster um, next year, you know, 1,000 kilometers. Yeah, I mean, these are, you know, I mean, an average subcompact will get you five to 600 on a, on a tank, you know, 45 liter tank. So we're almost there from a range perspective. Um, the, the refilling times, that's a little bit different, but... Well, one we talked could, about the need of that too. Right? Well, that's the mm -hmm. thing, you know. One can make a case: Does it necessarily need to be right. that fast? Because let's face it, it, you're supposed to be charging at home, mm -hmm. right? And you're sleeping. Yep. So who cares how long it takes? Because you're sleeping. That's right. Um, the only time it really matters is when you're going on long distance right. trips, right. and that's getting better because you have. I mean, the way I look at it is if I'm driving for two, two and a half hours, I, I'm done. I want to get out. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right? the, Unless you got a case of like, got to get there. I guess yeah. I get that. There's yeah, people that want to the make ideas. these cannonball runs to Florida That's in 24 it. hours. You know, That's it. Whatever. But it's not necessarily range anxiety anymore because the infrastructure is there. It's more bladder anxiety and that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> That's so, a good way of putting uh, it. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. So that's good to see that uh, some reports are uh, talking about what we kind of already know. Now, some big news on the charging front that happened uh, in the uh, latter part of June was that British Petroleum, or BP, acquired uh, a large UK uh, charging firm called Chargemaster. Now, they're one of the biggest in the UK. They run the Polar Network, and that has over 40,000 customers uh, with a network of over 6,500 charging points. I had experienced some of them when I was over there for Fully mm -hmm. Charged, uh, when we did some stops at the service centers. Um, so it's a big deal that they they, they, accompany, they acquired this company. I couldn't get any financials out of the, out of the report, but I'm sure it cost them a pretty penny. So the company is now going to be rebranded BP Charge Master, and it'll focus. Uh, they're going to focus on continuing to grow that deployment uh, with the installation of uh, ultra fast chargers. So again, these are chargers that will be able to provide greater than 150 kilowatt charging speeds over the next year. Um, and BP, like some other, we've talked about some other oil companies, I think Shell Shell, Shell was mm -hmm. one of the ones that got into it first. Uh, they see the growth in the EV market and they want to be able to make some money out of it. It's plain and simple, right? I, I just, I kind of laugh sometimes because, you know, we get a lot of conspiracy theorists that seem to think <laughs> that the oil companies and the gas companies are all against EVs. Um, I don't think so. There's a profit motive here, right? So right. if they're adopting it, then, hey, yep. you know, good for them. Yeah, um, <laughs> if you're gonna stop and have a drink and take a leak and all that stuff, you, you might as well. We might as well make some money on your charging rather than fueling up. Uh, you know, that's kind of the premise. Let's let's jump into that bandwidth. Mm -hmm. They have currently um, 1,200 petrol refueling stations in the UK today, so they want to expand that. Obviously, with uh, they've got at least another 6,500 charging points to add to the list. It's all good. So again, it's not the first time, and I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more. I'm not sure if, we, if Irvin and, and Irving talked about it uh that Irving like already okay so ago. Irving is an east coast yeah. um mm -hmm. oil company here in Canada that before, yeah. they already have a number of uh, fast chargers and yeah. level 2 chargers already deployed and mm -hmm. it's growing Nova Scotia Power is putting some into I've been paying attention to yeah. this because it's one of the things we want to do is go put back more he needs to go out east <laughs> please <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it's yeah the companies are getting involved which is good so. exactly 
All right, let's get on to the manufacturer segments of our program. Let's, of course, start off with Tesla and Model 3. Model 3 took a commanding lead in the month of June for sales, specifically here in Canada. That was a big, it made some big news up here. With 3% of all the Canadian EV sales uh, across the country, 3% were Model 3s. That's an astounding number. That's crazy. C- considering that normally EV sales make up less than 1% of auto sales here in Canada. Um, or like a perc- even a quarter percent of that. So to get 3% of all EV is a pretty big deal. Uh, it was estimated, and again, all the numbers are estimated until we hear numbers from Tesla during their quarterly reports. Everybody kind of has to guess, but you know, our, I, I use Inside EVs as a source, and they're, they've been really accurate. They're they really are, good. Yeah. They take their time. So they estimated that 1,850 Model 3s were delivered in the month of June. And I can tell you, I believe it because I'm seeing them all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. It's just like, where did all these cars come Pretty from? Pretty well daily, sudden? I see a Model 3 oh, yeah. drive Absolutely. it around. There, in my neck of the woods here, there's five that I know of, mm-hmm. just in, in, in my, my subdivision alone. Uh, so year to date for Canada puts it at just over 2,300 Model 3. So obviously the bulk were in June. Uh, just in case you're interested, the LEAF for Canada or, or for Ontario was second with 492 deliveries. That's quite the gap. Uh, though. So uh, almost you know four times lower than that uh, from that, and that's still a good number for Nissan as well. Just that's just an Ontario number. Of course, the majority were here in Ontario. I believe there were a few in BC and Vancouver, and maybe a few in Quebec. I'm not for June. We don't have exact numbers. Don't we know have... that some were delivered in both of those provinces. Do we have confirmation that actual anything was delivered in Quebec for June? Uh, yes. For Model yeah, 3s? I don't, I don't know exact numbers. Um, I know that somebody Did on Matt Facebook... Did Matt Hungarian get his? And... Uh, no, because he ordered a performance car. Okay, yeah, okay. So he's mm-hmm. going to be a few months out. Shout out to him. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did see uh, on our Facebook group, uh, one person has ordered his, and he's still waiting for delivery. He, okay. His is going to PEI. Okay. Oh. So he's still waiting for his Good. delivery to happen. Well, if there's any, Quebec, to ship it, right? there's any Quebec viewers that want to send us an email or post a comment uh, letting us know if you got a Model 3 in the month of June, that would be good to know. Yeah, we'd like to know. I know that uh, they're, they're, no, Montreal does have one now on display. Play, do they not in uh, they do. kind of thing they do so that happened but no test drives yet but that'll be coming speaking of which it just reminded me uh tesla just opened their store slash service room in quebec city oh in quebec city yeah okay. yeah so that was a big resounding success so, so if you so. are fully francophone because that's all they speak there now we just need one in ottawa <laughs> yeah ottawa's a big i market. can't believe they don't need have one, one in ottawa mm-hmm. for sure halifax too would be good yeah there you go it's coming hey tesla if you're listening <laughs> that's right and of course on model 3 orders we talked a little bit about that earlier with regards to the tax um, credits but now uh, tesla has opened up all the uh, orders for model 3s in the usa and canada to all buyers so it's not just previously tesla owners or reservation it's now anybody can just go on there and order yeah the configurator is open yep. uh it's worth uh, noting as well that uh you when you place your order you don't have to pay the thousand dollar deposit mm-hmm. anymore it's just your standard twenty five hundred dollar us or thirty two hundred dollar canadian price uh, to, to confirm your order now. So okay. that reservation thing that doesn't apply anymore, yeah. it's open to everybody. Now, I, I know we're probably going to get some comments from people saying, you know, <laughs> I waited for my car and why are these people getting theirs before? I know it's all over the map. Hey, it's Tesla. Uh, they've just decided all of a sudden that we've hit 5,000 cars per week and now yep. we can just open it up yeah. to everybody. So I think that's really what's going on. And to clarify on that, Trevor, I think it's... it's um, if you're a reservation holder and you haven't committed to an order, that's because you're waiting for a trim level that's not available today, whether it be or an option like all-wheel drive or standard range. But if I'm a new buyer and I just want to go, go all in and get what I can get today, then I'm going to get my order ahead of you. So it's not really, there's nothing wrong with that process. It's because you've been given the opportunity to get your vehicle first, but they're only building certain models and you don't want that. You want something a little different. So you're willing well, to Well, I actually, right? well, not to negate what you're yeah. saying, but I checked the configurator this morning and I can order performance, standard production yeah. or all wheel drive. Um, you can order, but you won't get delivery of it. No, no, of course. I'm just saying that that for, for ordering. what they've announced right. so far as far as what Correct. trim levels are making, they're, they're fully available right. now. So. But for delivering, they're still obviously going to focus on reservation orders where applicable. So if 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 a reservationist decides, you know what, I'm not going to wait for a standard range because you've got that option. You said, what, what you know, they got, come up and ask you, we're ready to commit your order. What do you want? And you say, I'm going to wait till 2019. So, but you can go back and click that. They will get your, your stuff before yeah, somebody it's else. It's also important to note that the standard range is still not available. It's right. still, you know, the big battery and you can yeah. get all all-wheel drive, whatever color you want, and the performance model. Mm-hmm. Uh, though that's still the only thing you can order yeah. at this point. So I think in what you were saying earlier, they still will honor reservation orders first, where where it's applicable, where they can. So yeah, I would hope that know. they would. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll see what transpires. But um, yeah, it's exactly. it's good. I mean, it's just confidence, I think, on their part that production mm-hmm. now is finally caught up to the point where they can start 
um, opening it up to, yeah. to more people that uh, that want whatever's being made. Currently. And you mentioned the performance edition earlier, so that's now been opened up, and we know some people that have jumped on board with that. Yep. Uh, that'll come with all-wheel drive, an exclusive white interior, no surprise. That's an option, and you have yep. to pay more Is for it. Is it an option? Okay. Yeah. So it's still $2,000 US more. Of for course, your white. standard long-range trim, premium interior, uh, performance wheels are available as an option. There's a whole bunch of different options, uh, including, of course, autopilot, uh, Full self driving. Yeah. Now the price without autopilot, full self driving is about sixty seven U S. And I think that's just with some of the options, not with. Uh, that, all there was of actually them, a right? price reduction uh, okay. because when Elon right. first said that the pricing of the Model the Three was going to be like seventy nine thousand yeah. U S. And then now the price is actually coming in at six thousand dollars. There's less. a big thud of all these people fainting. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, including Ian, of course, because he, yeah. yeah. he thought it was a he thought it was a typo when he saw yeah. the Canadian price. Yeah. Uh, part of that too is that they've unbundled some of the extra premium features out of the okay. car. So if you want the larger brakes and the 20 inch wheels right. and some of the other things now that's still a six thousand dollar package if i remember correctly mm -hmm. um so that's still a separate little okay. thing but you can get the um all-wheel drive performance uh mm -hmm. model uh model three and you can order that and they've actually started production on those cars because it's right. all about the money as far as tesla's oh, concerned yeah. they're still making the high spec cars first we margin. still have to wait for the money's in the margin <laughs> yeah yeah so that's that's all part of it so and is there a specific color that only the Performance Edition is offered in? No, there's no special color. Okay. Um, Tesla did add an extra color uh, called Obsidian Black, which is the black with the metal flake. Okay. Um, that was the one color, odd color out that they weren't making that was available on the S and the X. But now we have color parity across the whole product uh, line. And the pricing for colors now matches the S and the X now. So the pricing on the... Um, on the uh, on the pearl white and mm -hmm. the multi coat red now mm -hmm. have have been bumped up so they match exactly so cool. those of you who got early cars on those uh, on those metallic colors now got a little bit of a discount so <laughs> there you go it's always good good and continuing on Tesla news of course some other big news this week is that they've reached a tentative agreement with the Chinese government to build a new giga gigafactory in China now we we kind of knew that they were shopping around for different locations I think Germany is another one in for the for Germany Europe. is on the list apparently that's on the but list, that's Europe though. but that's Europe mm -hmm. Um, which is big news because they, they predict that this Gigafactory will be capable of up to half a million cars a year and be, be a primary production site for the Model Y with secondary production uh, for the Model 3. Uh, so we'll see if that actually spins up. There's a lot of things that they have to do to get to that point, and they plan to open it on 2020. But that's Elon time. That, so. Yeah, it's Tesla time. Add another year to these <laughs> numbers. Time. It's yeah. important to note, too, and I want to make a point of this, that Tesla is calling all of their factories now gigafactories. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a battery factory right. anymore. They have Good said point. that future factories that they're going to build, uh, Gigafactory 1 is the one in Nevada. Mm -hmm. It's not finished yet. Uh, the Gigafactory 2 is the one uh, for Tesla Solar. That's the one in Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Gigafactory 3, which is what the Chinese one will be, will be a battery slash car manufacturing facility all in one. Mm -hmm. that they want one-stop shop where they Makes can sense. make everything. Um, initially, they will probably only be able to pump out maybe a couple hundred thousand cars a year mm -hmm. until uh, maybe four to five years yeah. after the fact because they have to build yeah. it out in stages and stuff. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and there's a lot of speculation as to what they're going to build there first because, you know, the next car coming down the pike, as far as Tesla's concerned, really is the Model Y. Yeah, the semi and the pickup, well, the truck is too far off, but then we have the semi and the roadster, but those are more bespoke vehicles. Mm -hmm. We're not talking 500,000 a year, right. so they, they can be built in smaller facilities. I'm still, my opinion is still, Model Y will either be built or slipped into the Model 3 production line. In free mode. Maybe at first, mm -hmm. we'll see. It depends on how much parity there is with the Model 3 as far as what they've built. I mean, Tesla mm -hmm. or Elon did say that they were going to backtrack on their plans to really build something really special and different. So um, if there's a chassis similarity and all this kind of stuff. I would I fully expect integrate. the battery and the drivetrain to be identical to the Model 3. Mm -hmm. It might be stretched yeah. a little bit um, yeah. and different body, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still contend if that's not going to happen there, which is eh, probably not really likely. Look, the Gigafactory. In Nevada is huge. They've mm -hmm. only built 30% of the thing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of land lot out there to land. be building cars. So I personally mm -hmm. think for the North American market, they will expand the Gigafactory in Nevada. That will be where the Model Y will be built. Okay. And then the Chinese factory will be 3 and Y. Okay. Um, they, they basically said they will not be building S and X for the Chinese market in China. Uh, they're more of a higher-end vehicle, and the margins are better so that they can mm -hmm. still build them in North America and ship them over to China. So. Exactly. And... Uh, SOP for China is that companies wanting to come in and build need to have a local partner uh, with a Chinese car company. 
um, and of course give it some IP. Now I've read some articles that Chinese is the Chinese government is agreeing not to do that with Tesla. I but, find that a little hard to believe. So we'll have to wait and see. No, what that I know. I we know that that fact. yeah, that is a fact yeah. because okay. that's one of the reasons why Tesla wanted to build in okay. China, but they were holding off on not doing anything until that they whole were thing was lifted. That? Okay. And now that te now that the whole thing's been lifted, Tesla's in there like a dirty yeah. shirt. So. Well, good, good for them. Mm -hmm. That'll make things easier for them to get it going. So, and I think it's. Not sure if it was in Shanghai, because that's the city it they're is talking Shanghai. to. Yeah, uh, it'll be built in the outskirts of Somewhere Shanghai. there. So yeah. good luck. Let's see that coming. Continuing on with Tesla, uh, you can talk about this. You got an email with some information from a viewer in New Zealand. Yeah, well, it's been worth the wait. It's been a long time coming, but Tesla uh, finally opened their very first true Tesla store in New Zealand. It's huge. It's one of the biggest in the world because it houses retail service, delivery, uh, supercharging, destination charges, and 24-7 lounge, all cool. on one roof uh, in the heart of Auckland. be a nightclub in there, in a restaurant. Yeah, in, in, really... in Auckland. I was in Auckland <laughs> like over 20 years ago. Oh, it's a beautiful city. Me they too. were just finishing yeah. building the Needle there at the time, ah, so it was yeah. pretty neat. So uh, all the uh, New Zealand Model 3 reservations uh, holders were uh, there with an RSVP with a special tour in the morning of, uh, Ju is that June 29th? I think it's June 29th. Yeah, okay, sorry yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. So the retail offices have an overlook of half the space. Uh, behind is the service, and they have delivery and a lounge below the service, and it's all the chargers. So it covers three floors. Um, okay. You've got pictures going up behind yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. I'll it. put them all here mm -hmm. behind us. Uh, uh, they were also told that New Zealand Model 3s will come uh, mid-next year, so uh, a lot of them are pretty happy that... Uh, you know, the buying options available for them. Good. So congratulations, New Zealand. <laughs> Trying to remember, they're right-hand drive? Uh, they are right-hand drive, yes. yes. They're just I, like Australia. Uh -huh. Australia, I rented a car and drove, but not New Zealand. So mm -hmm. I was trying to remember that. Yep, Good for them. Awesome. But that's quite the facility. That's uh, it's wow, huge. To have all that stuff under one roof. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Big party time. Uh, let's change gears into Chevrolet. Of course, a lot of people still waiting for the Bolt. Uh, it's hard to find them here in Canada. There's a, up to a 12-month wait alone in, in the U.S. It's easier, but that's a fact. I think there's inventory, but I think it's mainly in the carb states yes. where you're able to get them. Uh, but in Canada, Chevy has opened up order books for 2019 model year bolts. Um, I don't think there's any significant difference as far as trims or colors or anything like that. There might be something slight. I haven't looked. Did, um, there was one new color or something. I was there a new color? Yeah. Obsidian black? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> They're not copying that. Uh, but what some of the good news that we have heard is that GM is going to start increasing production from their Orion assembly plant, which is outside of Detroit, Michigan. And they want to pass 200,000 sales of the bolt in the u.s alone by the end of the year so of course um, that they will hit that uh, u.s tax credit threshold as well which we talked about earlier and then see more bolts on the road for 2019 i, I do more. see a few around but i'd like to see more yeah yeah it's a decent car uh nissan of course nissan has announced because uh, they're doing so well with the 2018 model year leaf that they're going to start shipping and delivering that to middle eastern <coughs> countries Excuse in me. 2019 it may be the 60 kilowatt version we'll have to wait and see if they're going to ship the 40 or, or the planned newer version uh newer larger size that's coming down the pipe uh uae is going to be one of the selected markets uh, for deliveries on these and um so we'll see what happens, but uh, it's interesting to see that EVs are actually starting to pick up. I mean, Tesla's been there for a bit mm -hmm. on the uh, Middle Eastern side, uh, those hot countries uh, that are very oil dependent, yet they, they're getting it too. So They do they're, like they're electric cars, messaging. despite the fact they that do. they produce a lot of oil. They do, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, also on the Nissan front, there was a um, picture that came out uh, that caught a lot of attention in the last few days uh, from a Swiss charging maker, station company maker called EV Tech. And uh, they leaked a picture which was uh, appeared to have an alleged 60 kilowatt hour version leaf being charged uh, on one of their test chargers at 102 kilowatt during testing, which is pretty significant. I mean, Tesla right now is 140 ish. Is that right? Uh, 125. On, on 125. Yeah. I've never seen okay. 125. No, you've never seen 125. Well, I've never reached a 125. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, so that's really cool. Um, uh, that there actually seems to be something there. I've, I, I reached out to Nissan and didn't get any comments on that, but I'm sure that more information will be coming up. It's also, of course, speculated that the 2019 model year Leaf will will offer a larger or a higher output electric. Motor motor at 160 kilowatts right now i believe it's 110 something like that mm -hmm. um and offer 11 kilowatt as a minimum onboard charging or and 22 for the uh, uk european folks uh, that are on that uh, funky 240 stuff you know whatever and uh be able to have provide ultra fast charging capacity of greater than 100 kilowatts so it seems that if they're pulling 102 they're able to achieve that 
Uh, they and uh, there's rumors, of course, that Nissan may use LG them LG chemical cells. I put them there for thermal management <laughs> and provide uh, or, or provide active thermal management on there. We'll have to wait and see mm-hmm. what happens. But well, of course, we'll keep following the leaf on that. I am starting to see more of them on the road too. There's just, still delivery issues. But I'm seeing I think, them every just about every day now. Too. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. other than an S or an X and potentially the three, all the other EVs are having delivery issues, in, at least in our neck of the woods. Yeah. There's nobody that has stock on pretty well anything nowadays, unless you get, unless somebody cancels and you get lucky and trip across something, So, which, which is a good to see. Hopefully it won't slow down because of this incentive uh, step backwards. Jaguar I-Pace, uh, of course, uh, I had a look at it fully charged, and we're chomping at the bit to actually get our hands on one here, hopefully this fall, that we can do an overview and a look-see on it and actually drive it around. But the reviews that are that are more and more reviews are hitting the the YouTube circuits and coming out, and the feedback is very positive for the iPace regarding handling, power, and build quality. Of course, um, a lot of people comment that it's not a standout statement for an EV. It's kind of looks more normal car like or crossover type. And uh, I think in fact the last media event last month that was done, they actually had the journalists take it off road which was kind of neat. Uh, I think they've incorporated some Land Rover technology for hill keeping or being able to continue kind of going up a hill in very low uh, type of transmission mode, something along that line. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, we talked about this offline and I, I, of course, was able to see one live uh, in the UK. Um, I don't, <coughs> it's not, me. certainly not the size of a, of a Model X. Um, no. It's probably interior rooms a little bit smaller than an S and I would say exterior wise slightly but it's a little higher stance. Oh yeah. So it's got a more, you know, aggressive crossover stance and functionally a little bit different. So I think it'll it'll it's not a Tesla killer at all. It'll it'll find its own space. I don't have a problem with um, you know, the fact that people are saying that it's not a, a standout or EV statement. I mean, you know, a lot of people are making uh, comments about well evs you know they all look like weird. the i3 as an example, yeah like why do example. they need to be weird yeah. I, I don't believe they need to be weird yeah. there's nothing wrong with normal i, mm-hmm. I think the f pace and the i pace i mean they're cousins to each other look mm-hmm. perfectly fine yeah. um there's a lot of people out there that want an ev but they don't want to stand out right. so i think jaguar is just kind of taking kind of the safe road and mm-hmm. building a, a quality ev on a normal looking um, chassis mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong yeah. with that but if, you know, we mentioned the i3. I mean, it's a love or hate. Uh, I think it looks cool. I, I like the looks of it. I think it's oh, it's funky, very polarizing vehicle. For but sure. it's very polarizing, and some yeah. people don't like that. From so. a technology standpoint, it's brilliant. Brilliant. But yeah, yeah. the looks polarizing. I get it. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's bring uh, and talk about Hyundai with the Kona, specifically here in Canada. Uh, they've recently just opened up pre-orders now for the new Kona, and you can put a thousand dollar Canadian deposit on one. Um, we don't have firm details on which models of the Kona, which trim levels will be offered, but it seems to be that they're only going to come out with the higher battery option for Canada, the 64 kilowatt hour version. And there's no firm pricing yet. That pricing should be coming out in August or September of this year for Canadian folks. There are some, there's pricing in Norway and there's pricing in the UK already for it, but not in the US or Canada yet. But it's estimated to be around 48,000 MSRP Canadian uh, for, for, for the base trim. And then you'll, you'll have options to add to that. So if you're interested in getting into the compact SUV all-electric vehicle, the Kona is going to be a great vehicle, in my opinion. It's going to sell very well. I just don't think they're going to build that many, personally. I think it's going to take them some time to get them going. Well, there was some talk some time ago that they were, you know, they just didn't have the battery. Right. capacity to build mm-hmm. large numbers of these cars like with the ionic situation. well exactly mm-hmm. i mean the ionic caught them off guard and uh, this is largely based on the ionic type of platform mm-hmm. they're just going into where the hot market is which mm-hmm. is small compact you know suvs yeah. suvs type of thing and i mean it's no mystery that tesla's yeah. going to get into this with the with the model y so. and uh, nissan probably won't be very far behind with some yeah. variant of, of the leaf in a, in a crossover or something so. so you're in bc and quebec you can still get an incentive towards this and uh, do your pre-order if you don't care about the incentive <laughs> put your thousand dollars down because the anticipation is that the pre-orders are going to sell out pretty quick in canada well you know what uh, I'll, I'll i'll put this out here at forty eight thousand yep. dollars i think that uh, the gas savings alone uh, still make it a, a fairly compelling vehicle, mm-hmm. even without a rebate. Mm-hmm. Because if you, the, the thing is with an EV, the more you drive, the cheaper it is to operate. Absolutely. If you're mm-hmm. only driving 40, 50 kilometers a day, eh, you know, it's kind of hard to make a, a case mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just crossed 20,000 kilometers on my I car. I've had it just that. over six months. Yeah. So I drive the heck out of that. Thing. Two months, I've done 4,500. So I'm well, like going, and I don't even know where that came from. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> I haven't done any really So huge you know what trips. I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Just any excuse to go, what do we need? Loaf of bread, I'm gone. I'm right? gone. See you later. <laughs> exactly. Right. Any excuse it. to drive the darn That's thing. Good. Damn it. <laughs> it's just too good. Yeah. That EV smile. Uh, and the sister company, of course, uh, Kia, which, of course, Hyundai owns 51% of, so they really are the same company. But they're Nero. Uh, now you can look, and I believe you can't order, but you can get some specs and stuff from the U.S. Kia website on the Nero. Um, it's not expected to start deliveries until later 2019. For some reason, I thought it was sooner than that, but that's what I'm reading in this last article. So if anybody has something to correct me on, please e email me. Uh, email us and we can look into that uh, we'll we'll of course uh, continue to follow Kia here in Canada and see what info we can get from them um, and we think that it'll when it does first come out it'll be available of course in California and the other carb like states first compliance compliance and then reach its way up so um, I actually like the looks of the Nero a little bit better than the the other one but it's to each their own there yeah uh, so maybe maybe some legislation will come down that might change. I'm not aware of it, but who knows? Maybe well, uh, yeah. you know, I've been looking into that, and for some time now, it's been on the books, and it's been you know it's gone through the process of mm -hmm. being reviewed and stuff. But you know, th those legislations they move at a glacial pace. Yeah. So Tesla's still pushing for that, but it's exactly. it's nowhere in sight right now, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Anyway, so check out their video, and uh, you'll get more information on the Audi. Now, Volvo, we mentioned them before. Their, their first full electric vehicle is going to be the XC40, which is the smallest uh, uh, S-over or crossover SUV in that family. It's going to be their first pure electric vehicle. It's supposed to come out in later 2019, so we don't have any firm dates. Uh, but they continue to kind of you know, push out a little bit more information as they get closer on this. Um, they're also going to offer an available hybrid version and um, otherwise no other specs or details given at this time. And I, you'd have to go search Audi or Volvo to see if there's any other specs. But uh, I think it'll do well. It's certainly going to be pri priced higher than the, the, the Kia and the Hyundai. Um, smaller SUVs because it's, it's actually a bigger one than those. It's yeah, more of a yeah. entry level SUV. Well, it's yeah. their entry level yeah. um, SUV, but mm -hmm. because of the fact that it's electrified, it's going to command some kind of premium, yeah. of course. Definitely. But Audi, uh, uh, Volvo builds good stuff. I think it'll be a good quality product. It's when boxy, it comes but it's good. Yeah, it's boxy, <laughs> but it's good. That's an old quote. That's it. So stay tuned for more information on that. And BMW has announced that they're going to expand the current Leipzig plant in Germany to increase production capacity from 250,000 units annually to 350,000 units annually by 2020, only in the next couple of years. Uh, this this increases production to, uh, will cost BMW more than $350 million U.S., um, and of course, this plant produces the i3 in the i3s and the i8 in the i8 Roadsters. Uh, they want to increase production to 200 units per day, starting uh, by the end of the summer, and then kind of continue to increase it from there. Uh, and they also want to equip all the plants to be able to integrate to build fully electric vehicles uh, into existing structures uh, over the next few years, so that they won't just be limited to one or two plants. So it seems that BMW is continuing to really get the electrification game after kind of getting out there and stumbling and kind of wishwashing a little bit. Seems that they're throwing more money at it and they want to get well, into it. Well, they're building infrastructure to adapt to future products that are coming. Yeah, we know the, the XI3, iX3, that I mess, iX3, I don't know. Their X3 will the be... The electrified version of the X3. Whatever, I forget what that's called. <laughs> That'll be built. I'm and some sure kind of i4. Plant. And, and an, yeah, i4, it's true. Mm -hmm. So uh, good for BMW. Uh, and Germany does need to pick up the ball. They really need, they're kind of lagging behind. So uh, they need to pick it up and, and kind of smell the roses there and, and get going. Don't underestimate the Germans. Don't, of course, except in football. But hey, Ooh, you know, lost money, on, lost money on that one. Uh, little th This one company that we've been kind of keeping our eyes on because they're Canadian, they're based in Vancouver, even though they manufacture, they have a China uh, portion to it, called Electra Mechanica. And they just announced a teaser featuring an electrified version or replica of the Porsche 356A Speedster, which is uh, a James Dean iconic kind of mm -hmm. car, you know, and this lovely blue that they're going to come out with. They're going to build um, these... I don't know when, sometime in the next year or so, between 50 and 60K, I think is the estimated pricing in Canadian. Uh, Electra Mechanica already builds and sells a single seat three-wheeler called the Solo, which we've talked about once. Yep, and, yeah. they, and then they teased a, another a brand new car that they are going to develop and sell called the Tofino. Again, these, um, these BC references here. Mm -hmm. 
because they're in Vancouver, area, which yeah. which is a, a two seat uh, EV sports car that that is their own design. So I haven't heard much more about that. But uh, no other details or specs as far as size. But that would be a cool summer car to you know to to drive nice. Mm-hmm. Kind of like it looks like that the Jag Blue that uh, the Royals had for their wedding. Uh, Doesn't it look kind of like I that? I told blue? you, blue is is the hot color right it now, is. except for Tesla because that's midnight silver. <laughs> midnight silver, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And if you thought they were dead, well, they're not. Faraday Future is back in the news. They actually received a first round of equity funding in order of magnitude of about $2 billion, billion with a B as in Bob, dollars U.S. Uh, to keep them going, they have over 1,000 employees actively trying to finalize the development and delivering of their first production elect- all-electric vehicle, the FF91. They're trying to get that vehicle out to both U.S. and Chinese markets. Um, I don't have any further information or timing, but uh, I thought they were actually going, they were toast, they were done, but it seems that's not too... uh... And I think most of these, uh, the equity funding came from Chinese-based companies, if I remember correctly. These guys have had a lot of financial problems over the years, a lot of missteps and stuff. I mean, they put on a good show, Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise it's just... Some mm, cool-looking stuff there, but... Yeah, well, you know... We'll see. We need more. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I, I still don't have high hopes yet. So don't have we'll high see. hopes. If you're thinking of putting money on them, maybe hold on to that for a little bit. <laughs> see what happens. Let's see how, how steps uh, that they can take uh, moving forward. Finally, some other news. It's not just the consumer EV market, of course, that is growing. There's the commercial side with things like Tesla semis and other semis and, and trucks uh, and even midsize trucks that are being electrified. We see that already happening and we see bus fleets, things like that. But even if you scale that down, here's a nice little story from the UK from a company called Milk More. This is Britain's largest milk delivery service. And I remember we were talking about this before we started. I was a kid getting milk delivered to the door. Me too. So us boomers are dating ourselves. <laughs> but anyway, uh, those those days were cool. So they're still doing it in the UK, as a matter of fact. And Milk More purchased 200 all-electric vans called the Street Scooter. And they re- they've replaced about a third of their diesel fleet, diesel truck fleet or small delivery fleet. Um, it's interesting to note that they've already seen a 90% a 90% reduction on operating fuel costs just by a third of a replacement. That's amazing when I saw that. Duh, story. it's electric. <laughs> I know. Well, diesel is, uh, you know, a buck 70 a liter in the UK, a buck 60, buck 50. So, you know, do the exchange rates. It's not cheap out no, there. No, of course so, not. Uh, you know, and these things are getting a, a pretty good range of about 75 miles, 120 kilometers for a daily range. And they can handle... Uh, about 950 kilograms. That's what that's supposed to be. Uh, how many pints of milk do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> Take a wild guess. I don't know. My conversion is bad. Oh, it's 860 us, pints of milk. Wow. There you go. That's a lot it's of cows. 905 kilograms. That's a lot of cows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but good for them. Uh, it's a nice, nice concept. And of course, it's not. Where, where's the Where's the beer delivery truck? It's around the corner. Oh. oh. Okay. It's parked out all back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's, I'm sure Budweiser and those guys are working on all well, that we'll stuff. See. We'll see. And of course, lastly, uh, continuing on with that, UPS, we know that a lot of the uh, the courier companies are getting into electrification big time. There's a lot of hybrids that have been out for a while. Pure later, UPS run them all over the place. Well, it looks like UPS in London and Paris uh, are deploying 35 new all electric delivery vans. Uh, these are supplied by a UK based company called Arrival, not to be confused with the movie of the same name great movie by the way it was a good movie it was you had to really think about it you know oh yeah these Why, this is not a movie review thought. channel well, no we on. won't get into that <laughs> um and they also so actually sold these to the royal mail service so you the may see red, red versions of this exactly yeah. i think it's really cool looking it is a cool looking van it does look very futuristic and these were purposely designed purpose built to ups specs to give them a 150 mile range 240 kilometers on a daily charge which is more than enough these UPS guys, I don't know what the average route is here, but 50K would probably be an average and route. And they only drive towards the right. Maybe they drive right. only to the left, right? Because apparently it saves fuel. Mythbusters did an episode did. on that. Really? They proved, I didn't yeah, know that. they did. They proved that it is more efficient. I didn't know that. So if you just drive around a right hand turn lanes, I'm going to have to try that. See if I can find a route to get to work that's huh. only on rights, <laughs> just to see what happens. Well, maybe that was a cost savings thing, right, for oh. fuel. So maybe they don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that's what we have for some stories. Hope you found it engaging and, and informative as we try to be on the show. And thank you for everybody who does subscribe. We, we certainly do appreciate it. Um, there is contact information, of course. So we do love to hear 
emails and all that kind of stuff. So how can people reach us, Trev? Well, as usual, you can email us, and the email address is evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, and the handle is evrevshow. Uh, please subscribe, like, and share to our YouTube channel. That gets the viewer count up, and it gives us more features so we can do things like live streaming and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. We also have a Patreon campaign, so if you'd like to support the channel, you like what we do, every little bit helps. And you can find that at patreon.com forward slash EV Revolution Show. There you go. That's how you can reach us. So another show is the can. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned as we put more content out there. Yeah, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks Take for watching. Bye-bye. See you.